Hey Scott, um, what was the major difference there that you saw coming out in the second half? Uh, offensive rebounds. I mean, they got eight in that first quarter. Gave them, gave them a little bit of juice, and we we cleaned that up. We got one, and I think one in the second quarter, maybe two, and then they got only a couple in the second half. So that was the big difference. And then we got hot in that third quarter. Uh, DB came in and made some made some threes. I thought he had some great looks in the first half, but he, you know what, shooters have to keep shooting. And he made some shots, uh, kind of broke it open for us, but uh, that was good. That was we needed it. And then Alex, I thought Alex gave us great minutes. And I, I give him a lot of credit, like I give some of the other guys that haven't played, but they come in, they they contribute, and that's because they they're mentally into the game, they're physically ready through all the work that they do on the off days, and our strength coach and conditioning coaches, and the assistant coaches keep them ready. And but I thought he was a big part of our win tonight. How nice was it to have Thomas back on the bench? That was uh, definitely the, the best part about the first half, just seeing him in the locker room. I saw him with as I was walking on the court with about four minutes to go. Gave him a great big hug. I mean, he's definitely missed, loved by all of us. And I keep saying it's like the craziest thing, all this craziness that happened to us. And we, we recovered from all of it, um, all the stuff that's well documented. But seeing him... And it, it hurts because he's such a winning player and such a great kid that, you know, it's unfortunate that he had to go down with, an, uh, with a season-ending injury. But having him around, you know, now going forward, it's going to be great. I don't know if he's going to travel with us, uh, but I sure hope so because he's just, he's just a great kid, great spirit. He's a mood locker room lift, uh, lifter. He just keeps everybody up. Fred? Hey, Scott. Uh, as Starting lineups tomorrow will probably be the same. <laughs> See how Russell feels. Uh, as as some, speaking of one of your starters, as as someone who, who came into the league as an undrafted guy, uh, what is it about Garrison's personality that allows him to kind of persist, persist through multiple two-way contracts and coming in the league undrafted to, to be able to stick like this? He's a fighter. He's a fighter. Um, yeah, he was a fighter. He wasn't good enough to be recruited at by UC Irvine, but he was pretty good. He was a pretty good college player. He fought his way. I remember, I remember the the pre-draft workout, and we did this running drill, and he has he has a record. I thought he was gonna, I thought his lungs were gonna explode. He was running so hard, and you could tell that he was. He wanted to slow down, but he was determined. That 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 got my attention right there. And it's funny, just a little thing like that. Some of these some of these kids don't realize that it's important. And I tell guys that are always trying to make it, there's no such thing as a warm up for you. There's no such thing as a stretch period for you. Right when practice starts, you better be on, and you better if you want to make it, you got to treat every practice like game seven. And I I believe in that. And it's hard to make it in this league. It's hard to make it in this league if you're not drafted, and it's hard to make it in this league even if you are drafted for many years. It's hard to make it for 10, 12 years. But he has, he has the toughness, he has the fight, and he has a skill set. He, and, and, the, and to me, the best skill set he has is the play hard skill. And I, 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 don't coach, I don't coach effort, but when you've got that skill, that is a talent that nobody wants to, you know, nobody wants to use that or talk about the analytics on play hard. I don't know what you can do, but there's a play hard analytic and, and Garrison is the, is the, is the poster boy for that. Neil. Hey Scott, I'm sure you haven't had a ton of time to think about it, but given that you either have the second day of a back-to-back -back in a different city, which means, you know, Russell, maybe less chance of playing. Obviously, Howell went out. If both of those guys are unavailable, do you have any sense of what you would do at point guard? Yeah, I might do the Bill Russell, Lenny Wilkins. You don't know that? They were player coach. We would run a zone and hope that no one pressures me. Um, I don't know. I don't think uh, Howell's injury is, uh, I think he kind of had a 
land on somebody's foot and it kind of tweaked his knee a little bit. I don't think it's serious. He said he feels much better, but you know that you never know how you feel the next day. And with Russell, you never know. He's played the last couple of back-to-backs. This is obviously um, different going in another city, but we'll see. He, his body's feeling better and better every day. And so we'd love to have them both back, but if not, be the next man mentality, no, no excuse mentality and try to figure out a way to beat a, a team that, you know, they had, I thought they had a great physical, tough game last night against the Pacers. Christos. Hello coach. Congratulations on the win. What would you like to carry on from tonight's game about uh, the, ga the, the games until the break of uh, all star game? And also how satisfied you are about uh, on uh, Mo and uh, Alex effort, especially on defensive end? Yeah, I mean, they got, they got, they, they were playing against one of the, the most talented offensive big in the league. A guy can step out, he can post, he has a mid range, he can put it on the floor either way. He has great footwork, he gets to the free throw line, he has all of, he has a lot of those little veteran tricks. And I thought they both, you know, I thought, Alex in particular, I thought he did a great job of using his body and making him take tougher shots. He kept running to play. The, you know, he was getting screened. He can't step back from a three. I mean, one time he got the look, but the other times he did a pretty good job of stopping him. But we got three, I mean, TB's out, so, but we got three pretty good centers that we just have to find. Uh, sometimes we just got to find two, two of them that are playing well in the, in the same night. But I thought, I thought, I thought, um, Alex gave us a, gave us a lift, and like I said earlier, that's not easy to do when he hasn't played a lot of minutes. But I thought I thought the minutes were great tonight. Honestly, Q, it did it. Uh, it definitely fueled a fire up under me. Uh, you know, I was I was definitely having a little rough game. Legs weren't in it, but uh, he started chirping and saying he didn't foul me or that he doesn't foul me, and that was just mind boggling to me because. I just feel like the only way you can guard me is by following. So I kind of took it personal and just turned it up from there. Appreciate you, B. Christos. Hello, Bradley. Congratulations on the win. Seven win the last eight games. What it means and how important is to build on uh, that performance and that effort tonight? Uh, it means a lot. You know, it's big for our team. It's big for, for everybody. Uh, Confidence-wise, moving forward, we know our schedule gets tough. Uh, but at the same time, we still know we haven't done much. We haven't done anything. That's what I keep telling our guys. Uh, you know, we still have a lot of work that we need to do, things we need to get better at and clean up. And uh, and we still got to win more games. You know, that's that's the ultimate goal. You know, so uh, obviously continue to build on, you know, the last six, seven games that we've been playing and uh, keeping that same energy and focus on the defensive end. Leonardo. Hi, Brad. It's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Congrats on the win. Brad, how do you feel about the team compared to the start of the season? Uh, well, for one, thank you. Uh, two, uh, I think we're a lot better. We had some growing pains early on. Uh, we had a lot of guys out with COVID. You know, Thomas Bryan had his ACL injury that really hurts us. Uh, you know, then we had guys in and out. You know, we had guys on 10 days. We had guys... Uh, we caught up from the G League. So it was just, it was tough for us early on. You know, we couldn't really find our rhythm and get our niche. Uh, but now we have all of our guys back healthy. And, uh, and we're, you know, we're attacking everything full steam ahead. But, you know, we're doing it on the defensive end and collectively. And that's all we can ask for. Thank you. Ava. Brad, what was um, the regrouping like in the locker room at halftime? Did anyone have to say much of anything or did you guys pretty much know what had to be done? Uh, we pretty much knew. Uh, coach came in with some emphasis, showed us some clips, and you know we were we were terrible with giving up offensive rebounds. And then offensively, we just weren't knocking down shots. You know, we were only down what two at half or up two, and we haven't played good at all. So, uh, you know, we we just kept that same focus and mentality and carried into the second half, and we turned we channeled it to the defensive end. You know, we got we got stops when we needed to. We limited their offensive rebound chances, uh, second point chances, and uh, we just got out and on the offensive end and just took over the game. And we've asked Garrison so much just about his kind of situation coming onto the team as a two-way player. How have you seen him grow his game from when he first kind of got to this organization? 
No, he's just a young man that takes advantage of his opportunity. You know, that's all the NBA is. Uh, you know, the lifespan of the league is three years. Uh, so you you have to you have to take every single opportunity you have, man, and hold on to it like it's your last. And that's all G's doing. Uh, you know, from the day he first got here on, you know, on a two-way con two-way contract, uh, you know, being in the G League, coming up, playing with us, like, you know, he's He's seen the ups and downs, uh, but now he's starting on, you know, starting our team now. And it's, it's just a proof of the effort and the hard work, you know, that you, you, you continue to put in and, you know, coach rewards those things, you know, and then when you have that opportunity, you seize it, you'd be ready every single moment you're out there. Shy. Uh, may I record? Yeah, I got you. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Brad, uh, I know you've been a rookie in this league. Uh, Danny is obviously a rookie right now, too. Um, and I know he's been in a bit of a slump, whether it's foul trouble or getting less touches. What is your message for him to snap out of it? Uh, play winning basketball. That's all we need Danny to do. And that's all he's been doing. Uh I tell him all the time whenever, you know, I'm sitting next to him on a bench or on a court, you know, it's your whole year this year is for you to learn. We're not, you're not sitting here saying we need Denny to go score 30 points a night. We're not sitting here saying we need Denny to go guard the best player on the other team. You know, we need Denny to continue to just be ready, know his role, uh, know personnel of the other guys in the other team and be ready to shoot the ball. You know, uh, you know, he's in a slump, whatever you want to call it. I don't call it that, you know, it's, He's a rookie. You know, he's going to have ups and downs. He's going to put a lot of pressure on himself. You know, we're going to have high expectations of him. His family probably does. You guys do. Like, so it's going to be tough on him. He has to realize that this whole year is about having fun and learning, you know, and taking those in stride and getting better at it. Thank you. Yeah. Ava, do you have another? Yeah, Fred, so, or, um, sorry, uh, Brad, did we ask you about your third quarter and, and how hot you got just all of a sudden coming out of half, halftime? Yeah, Josh Okoji. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Quentin, do you have another? Don't think so. Fred? No, I'm good. Yeah, I got I got to follow up on that. Uh, what... What is it about trash talk that can set you off and actually not just like change your mentality, but actually make you play that well? I don't know. I think it's, I think it's the underestimating factor of it. You know, uh, you know, you have some people who don't think you're really as good as your numbers say until they face you. You know, you have some people who, you know, just love to talk. Uh, some people just try to do it to get under your skin. Uh, but, you know, I never started, but it's something that, you know, my mom has kind of always built and instilled in me, like never just let anybody talk to you any kind of way. Uh, and then always let your game speak for itself. You know, you, you go out there and compete and you bust them in the mouth. That's what I was always taught. So, uh, I, it's not just for me, it's with anybody. I think trash talking just boosts your, your focus, your energy, you know, you just want to go out and just prove somebody wrong, I guess. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. All right. Last question to Matt. Hey, Brad. Uh, sorry if you had been asked this. I was in Garrison's room earlier. But um, for you guys, you know, you've beaten some teams like the Lakers and the Nuggets and all these other teams. To, to beat a team like the Wolves, where, you know, in the past you guys have lost to some sub 500 record teams. I mean, how important was that to, to have that within this streak? That was big. You know, uh, like you said, in years past or maybe even earlier this year, we probably would have gave. Played to the down to the to their level uh, of the competition. There's no knock on them, uh, but I think we would have kind of lowered our our level of play, you know, versus how we've been playing the last six or seven. Uh, but I think we did it honestly. I think we kind of did it in the first half. And uh, you know, Russ actually said something at halftime: just keep guys engaged, don't play down to the level of our competition. Just you know, control what we control, play our style of basketball, and I think that's what we did. Hey, Dallas, you um, obviously had a good second half there. How's the knee feeling? Uh, it's good, you know, three three days in between games, uh, we don't get that often during the season. So it definitely helped and, you know, felt good out there. And um, Brad noted that it was Russ who kind of spoke up at, at halftime uh, after the kind of slower first half start. What is his leadership like 
um, what's his style like compared to maybe other kind of vets you've been around in the league? You know, that's everything he does. You know, you, you see a lot of things on the court with all the energy that he brings. And, uh, you know, he has great games. He has not so great games. But uh, well, I think the most important what he brings is that leadership and uh, being vocal and, uh, you know, teaching the young guys, helping everybody. And, you know, if we're not doing something right, he's going to let us know. It doesn't matter who it is, if it's a if it's a vet or a younger player. And uh, and I think that's, that's helping bringing us all together, you know. Neil. Hey, Davis, you, you had those four straight threes in the third quarter. Was it just a matter of once you saw the first one go in, you were like, okay, I just need to keep getting them up? Uh, yeah, some, sometimes enough to get one. And, uh, you know, after the first one or the second one and it went in, it just just keeps going from, from there. Christos. Hello, Davis. Congratulations on the win. Thanks. What it means, uh, the that streak, the seven wins in the last eight games, about your potential as a team? And about you, do you feel decision in the best shape of your career? Uh, about what decision you're t t talking about? Overall, about your shape. Oh, my shape? Uh, I feel good overall. Uh, and I think uh, as a team, you know, that's the, that's the most important thing. It's I feel like we're... Uh, we're kind of bringing together everything that we've been talking about in the beginning of the season. You know, we had some games that uh, against good teams, we were close and we lost in the last in the fourth quarter. And uh, what's been the key in the last games, I think we've been, you know, closer to the top 10 of the teams on defense. And, you know, the offense has been like some games good, some games not so good. But uh, if we keep playing defense, we're going to get ourselves a chance to win every night. Kellen. Hey, Davis. Um... Garrison had an, another really good game as a starter. What does he bring to the team, and what have you seen him improve on the most? Uh, well, you know, one, one thing is the obvious one. He brings a shooting. You know, every team needs that on the court, and uh, it opens up, opens up a, a lot of room for uh, Brad and Russ. Uh, but at the same time, you know, that energy, he, he earned that spot with his energy, what he does on defense. Uh, he's fighting, following for the ball any, any chance he gets. So... I think that's been uh, really impactful, and uh, it it, it kind of gets everybody else going as well. And what what do you feel like he's evolved? Like, what has his, his evolution as a player been like in your in your in your eyes? Uh, you know, I think he's just uh, always been confident about his abilities, uh, shooting wise. But I think he's like that energy that he brings. Uh, he did the same thing uh, last year when he got minutes. I wouldn't say that he's evolved in some way. He's just doing the same things he's been probably doing his whole whole career and, uh, and you know, earned his minutes. I forget exactly how long ago it was, but probably a few weeks ago you were on with us and you said something along the lines of how you guys as a team can't adopt a losing mentality even though you were losing games. You've won seven of eight right now. How, how do you feel like as a team you, you managed to – avoid that even as you continue to lose games early i didn't hear the last one or just how as a team do you think you managed to avoid that mentality you were talking about to be able to kind of turn the season around like this yeah man it's more it's super hard especially when you lose that many games like we were losing um you know it starts kind of creeping into your mind even before the game starts you're like man we're about to lose another one you know what i mean those kind of thoughts started creeping in your head but when it's just it's coming together as a team and having the leaders that we have uh you know, you know, still competing as hard as they can and giving you criticism and coaching and this and that. It's it's all those things together that make you, you know, stay locked in on what's the end goal. And once you win one, you know, once you win two, now we're on a roll and that doubt starts creeping out uh, back out of your mind. So it's it's definitely hard to do. Um, but, you know, we just, we like I said, man, we had to stick together as a team. We couldn't start here blaming guys, blaming guys, because that's just going to make it worse. You know, we got to come together as a team. That's what we did. And we're, you know, fortunate we're winning some games right now. And, you know, pray that keeps going. Any other questions for Garrison? Yeah, yeah, I got I got another. How you, you hadn't played that many minutes with the starters until you actually entered the starting lineup. How, how comfortable are you feeling next to those guys right now? It's it's getting more comfortable. I mean, you know, when you don't play with those guys ever and you get thrown in there, you know, it's, it takes a minute to get your chemistry together. But, 
you know, I know my job out there is to play as hard as I can on defense and space for, for Brad and Russ and knock down shots when they come to me. So, you know, my job didn't change when I started to enter, enter the starting lineup. My job stayed the exact same, and, you know, that's what I try to do. And, you know, now we're starting to, you know, mesh pretty well together. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's fun playing with those guys, man, because, you know, they're great players, uh, Brad and Russ, and, and playing with Mo and Rui, you know. You know, me and Mo were out there to bring the energy, you know, and that's what we try to do and play hard on defense. So, particularly my do- job doesn't ch- uh, change, but once you once you start playing with those guys more and more, the chemistry just keeps flowing. Uh, just so you know, Bradley Beal is on the primary link. Uh, Kellen? Hey, Garrison. Um, Coach Brooks was telling us about kind of a pre-draft type of workout that you did where he saw that you were outworking everyone, maybe set some sort of – record that day do you remember that and I guess he was kind of talking about being like an undrafted player and having to always be on like what is your mentality when you were like an undrafted player do you feel like you have more to prove well I mean I kind of I, yeah for sure uh, to answer your question you know that's kind of always how it's been for me you know I wasn't the best high school player I came in with to college with you know two or three D1 offers and then wasn't playing at the beginning of my freshman year I had to work my somebody got injured that's when I started playing more and, you know, I had to, I was a football player mainly in high school and that's what I loved and that's what I did. I had a football body and had to transform everything, man. And it's been able to grow into this focus on just basketball. But yeah, man, that, that underdog, um, you know, has been instilled from me from, for a while. And I don't care, you know, if I'm on a two way making 80 million, it does not matter to me. You know, I mean, I can say that now because I'm not making that, but you know, that's the kind of mindset that I, I have to continue to have because, you know, I, I love winning man, and I hate losing. And, and that's what I try to do every day is just win, win games for hopeless win, win games. And, you know, I know I got a short lease and that's okay. Cause you know, I'm on a two way. It's my second year. We got older guys in here. And so I just got to continue to focus on what I'm doing. And uh, so I don't, I don't, to answer your question, I don't, I don't really care if I'm making a lot of money or a little money. I'm going to try to keep that mindset every day and work as hard as I can because uh, that's just, you know, what I was taught at an early age. Do you remember that pre-draft workout that Coach Brooks was me- mentioning? Did, was that significant to you? Yeah, I remember. I think it had something to do with the conditioning drill. Here. Yeah, yeah. Tough drills. It was designed for us not to beat it. You know, we had to get 26 touches down and back. Uh-huh. In 226, I mean, I don't think anybody got 26 in that time, but it was it was designed to see who would push through and designed to see who would go as hard as they can and finish it out. Um, and, you know, you when you're a guy like me on the, the mentality I have, I mean, I try to go as hard as I can at everything I do, whether it's running, you know, whether it's, you know, working out or whatever it is. You know, I try to go do the best of my ability every single time I step on that court. Thanks, Garrison. Chris Doss. Oh, Garson, congratulations on the win and the performance as well. I would like to ask you how how special was that game for you? Because you started in the lineup, you had almost a double double. It was one of the best performances, or maybe the best performance for you in the NBA. Uh, I mean, it was. I'm glad we won. You know, I looked at the box score after I was minus nine, and that that kind of pissed me off. I was looking at it like, my goodness, man. You know, there's always something that I'm trying to critique. You know, whether I have 18 and 9, that's, that's neither here nor there. I mean, the, the matter is that we won. That's the most important thing. You know, if I have zero and zero, but we win, it doesn't matter. We won. You know what I mean? So that's 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 mainly what I try to focus on. When I start, you know, worrying too much about my stats or what, then I'm, I'm going the wrong direction. You know, I try to do the best I can to help us win. Um, so I can't sit here and worry about my stats. My job is not to score 20 points a game if it comes and it, it you know it happens it happens but I try to try to not pay attention necessarily towards the uh to the stats and just do whatever I can to help us win you know fortunately I knocked down some shots tonight that uh that helped us get the lead so but so that's the, to answer your question and also how easy make your game and how enjoyable is to play alongside with Bradley and Russell you said how enjoyable is it yes it's it's fun man they're First of all, they're, they're some of the best competitors I've ever played with. Uh, you know, Russell's intensity, you know, nobody really can match that. It's, he's, he's another, he's a different breed, man. He, he plays as hard as he can, he's intense, he's, you know, whatever. And then Brad's, you know, 
he's the leading scorer in the league, one of the best players in the league. So it's it's a lot of fun playing behind or with those guys and it makes my job a lot easier to just try to help them out, you know, because they're doing the, the most of the work. Um, so I try to, you know, compliment them in any way I can to help them out because they're they're the focus of our team. They're always the focus of our team. So whatever I can do to help them, you know, it's, it's fun playing with those guys because they're winners. You know, you don't want to play with guys that will blame and, you know, don't care if they win. They just want to get their stats. And that, that's not those guys at all. You know, they're winners. And that's, that's what's fun to play with. Thank you very much. Keep up. Uh, last question to Karita Parks. Hi, Garrison. I came in a little late, so apologize if you've been asked about this. But when you look at being undrafted on a two-way contract starting, what's your thoughts on the progress that you've made in the league and just uh, throughout your journey? Uh, you know, that's probably one of my flaws is that a lot of people say to me that, you know, you can, you, it's okay to sit back and be like, wow, I'm, you know, I'm starting. It's okay to you know, be happy with where I'm at, but, you know, in my, my mentality, the way I am, you know, I'm never satisfied, you know, uh, I don't care that I'm starting right now. I mean, I do, it's, I'm, I'm thankful for that spot. You know, I'm thankful that, you know, coach trust me that's put in there, but, you know, now there's, there's something more, there's something else that I'm pushing for. So, you know, more wins, more whatever. It's, I'm, I'm trying never to be satisfied because once I start getting complacent, then, you know, I'm, I'm going backwards. So, 